Gold and Roll Radio. This week is a historic week in the metals market. Why, guys? The gold-silver ratio, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it pushed above 89, just about above 89, and that's the highest it's been since 1993. So what does that mean? Silver is very undervalued. Just the price of silver in the mid-14s, 1440-ish today on Wednesday recording. Looks like it wants to turn around. It looks like it is ready to go higher. Uh, it's been holding right around here at this 1440 level. Um, one thing to note on the daily chart is that the RSI did not break below 30 on the daily chart when it hit its low here. So obviously the trend is still down with silver, but it looks like it could easily turn around here and start moving higher and therefore tighten that gold silver ratio. The gold price has held above its previous low around the 1270 level. And we are watching it closely because this is the seasonal time where we're expecting a bottom with gold in between now and in July. So we're looking at ho hopefully a little bit of weaker levels in the mid 1200s to, to have some buying opportunities, but we may not get it, but that's what we're watching. Sure. And our seasonal pricing seems to be going away. I mean, May's almost over. I guess we still got June and July for the summer months, but we get into the Indian wedding season here later this year. And that always ends up pushing the metals prices back up. So following that uh, Indian harvest, Indian wedding season, the gifts given, and you always see a little bit of pop in price. Uh, in the meantime, yeah, I think we're all kind of in agreement that we see gold uh, possibly, if not likely, continuing to push down, although it, it seems to be having a little bit of trouble getting below these 1270 marks. That's actually encouraging to me. So how does this correlate, too, to the U.S. dollar? I mean, we're now above 98 on the index again. We haven't seen that very frequently at all here. Do you expect that to coincide with a dollar rally this summer? Dollar to me sort of looks like a uh, like a raccoon inching its way towards a picnic trying to grab something. I mean, you, you look at this movement up in the dollar. Uh, it's been very slow, very measured, up and down, up and down, building this compressing wedge. Uh, I still think the dollar's coming up into 100 uh, to build that big multi-year head and shoulders pattern. Where in the world did you get that analogy? I mean, <laughs> a raccoon inching toward a have picnic. Have you seen a raccoon doing this? I mean, that, <laughs> his brain works differently fantastic. than ours. Absolutely <laughs> fantastic. We got hawks and doves and bears and bulls and now raccoons. Yes. <laughs> I think the point here is that raccoons head towards trash and that they'll eat out of the trash. And therefore, I think the dollar will ultimately be trash. However, the dollar looks like it wants to actually go a little bit higher. It's back above 98, as Tori said, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see the dollar gaining some strength. Yeah, and if we see consistent uh, interest rate policy, you should see consistent movement in the dollar, right? I think so, and I don't think that there's going to be a substantial downturn in the dollar until there's weak monetary policy. You know, certainly a reversal in interest rates. If we if we get that in the some point in the coming months in 2019, well, that could certainly be the trigger, but... Until then, there's no reason on the world scene for it to, to not go to 100. Exactly. Yeah, our, our interest rate is higher you know, than, than the other competitive markets. And since we live in a world where nothing makes sense anymore, I mean, a, a increase in the interest rates, which, I mean, mathematically, or at least long term, you would assume is good for the dollar and dollar value, probably ends up causing a decline in the value of the dollar, just given the way markets work today. Yeah, things are backwards. I mean, it's like the... the recent news that 43% of Americans polled think that socialism is a good direction for this country to take. If that's not a reason to buy gold, I'm not sure what is. But, you know, we may be in a holding pattern here for 16, 18 months pending the election cycle. Also, you know, there's more than just the monetary cycles, financial, economic cycles. There are political cycles. And this is going to be a rocky road, a lot of impeachment talk. If that gets legs, that could also be something that drives gold higher. Let's move over to the other white metals, platinum and palladium this week. Since the last recording, palladium had a solid couple of days. I uh, had a really good conversation with a client today. Just his theory, interestingly enough, was that palladium's just not on the radar of the manipulators. And is palladium representative of what silver and platinum and gold would be doing if, if unhindered? But anyway, just throwing that out there. Uh, we did see some strong rallies. We've rolled over a little bit today. Miles, why don't you walk us through that, that palladium chart? 
Sure. And I mean, Platinum's made so much ground over the last month against Palladium. It's completely reasonable to see that ratio uh, move back the other direction, at least for a short period here. I mean, Palladium coming off a few hundred dollars, bouncing into that 50% line, as Tori mentioned. Uh, we've had some good upwards movement here, sitting right around the 382 fib. Uh, so I'm we're in no man's land. I mean, we're at a level. You got to wait and see which direction it breaks out. Uh, Platinum on the other side, uh, taking a bit of a nosedive. Uh, I've been tinkering around with the charts for the last few days. Uh, so I'm going to put my target load around 790 uh, on the Platinum price both based on some trend levels and some extrapolated out fibs. So uh, I think we're going to see Platinum coming down here another 10, 20 bucks. Uh, then I'll start uh, looking to see where the turnaround point actually is going to be. Because uh, I do think we've had enough time here where following the Palladium crash and the Platinum rise, they've had some time to kind of balance out and, and sell off some of that volatility uh, and should continue their trend should continue to expect to see uh, platinum moving up palladium holding steady uh, and i think your your client's point on palladium not being a manipulated metal i mean look where that puts would put gold you know if we get palladium back up at 1600 that's platinum at 3000 probably gold at around 2500 silver at 45 to 50 bucks if you just look at those average prices and i think those are not unreasonable targets for the next move up in the metals Absolutely. I like that. I, I think that's where the metals are ultimately headed. Um, right now with platinum around 800, I mean, you're talking about this it bouncing off this trend line where we're headed with platinum. I mean, this is the chance for platinum. This is maybe your last chance to buy platinum around these levels. Yeah, just look at that chart. I mean, look where we were just a month ago. We've almost erased a lot of the gains that we've had in 2019. You're getting a reprieve here on something that you had initially missed. Add to your ounces of platinum here. Robert started the show by saying add to the ounces of silver in your portfolio. And ultimately, it ends up being more gold in your pocket later. So those are the strategies in IRAs, outside IRAs, whether it's storage account or in possession. And keep your eyes on all those ratios. Right now, you get the double bonus of low spot prices on top of extreme ratios. Touching on the U.S. equities market before we leave today, it has failed to break above a new high and it could be trying to roll over here. It's been very news dependent and it's been a trader's environment. I mean, volume hasn't been there. True buyers haven't been there. It's been a trading environment. No, and value hasn't been there. Indeed. I mean, the PE ratios are out of control and have been for a while. With the Dow priced up in the high 20,000s, uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, we've got five now failed attempts uh, to breach the old high. And here just in the last couple months, we've had three taps on the low side of the recent trading line. And let's be honest, there's nothing between here and 20% down again. You want to know when they're going to lower interest rates again? When you see that gap fill on the way down, they will yep. take all measures possible to try to juice the markets because it's a credit driven economy. Yeah, absolutely. And six and a half percent on this recent move away from the all time highs and just scraping above that support line. I mean, it, go, it goes from 6% to 20% down very quickly. And that's when we bring back in the discussion about the dollar. And as you mentioned, interest rates, things change very, very quickly. So I think all eyes should be on the Dow right now, especially with us bouncing around this low end uh, support level. So in the meantime, be patient with the spot prices of the metals. Look for value that's in the ratios. You should be adding to your platinum, adding to your silver. And over time, it's going to pay out. You'll be glad you have the hedge. So that's going to do it this week for Golden Rule Radio. As always, we appreciate you stopping by. If you liked what you heard, click the subscribe button, ring the bell to get notified. Uh, and you can always head over to our website, www.mcelvaney.com, Twitter, at ICA Gold, Facebook, McElvaney Financial, or give us a call to talk to one of our advisors here anytime at 1-800-525-9556. Thanks for listening. Have a good week.